Greetings subscribers and other curious persons and welcome to another Tuesday Talks vlog on a topic decided by the Goodreads Tuesday Talks group. This week's topic is what are your thoughts on the synopses of books? I have two main points here. Accuracy and engagement. In terms of accuracy, what I want from the synopsis of a book is to know as much as possible that will help me make the decision about whether I'm going to enjoy the book as I can get without it spoiling my enjoyment of the book by giving me information that it's enjoyable to find out or that has a greater impact if I get it in the full context. So what I ideally want from a synopsis would be if, say, the protagonist discovers at some point in the book a portal to another land that lets them find their missing father, I'd like to know that it's the kind of book that has characters going through portals to find their missing father. But if the portal doesn't turn up until the last chapter, what I don't want is the synopsis to end with, but fortunately they find a portal that lets them go to the realm where their father's been tracked by Golithrax, the father stealer. Because then, for the entirety of the book, I know that it's going to happen. So the whole, how am I going to find my father? He's been taken to another realm, but how am I going to get there plot is kind of meh, because the synopsis has told me. But on the other hand, if the synopsis just, if the synopsis tells me that the protagonist is depressed because their father's disappeared and no one knows what's happened to him. I don't know that it's a fantasy book that involves travel or science fiction book that involves travel to other realms. It feels like a story about someone coming to terms with the fact that their father has run off, so their home's broken up, they're going to have trouble at school, maybe. It doesn't tell me enough. So I want something midway in between that doesn't spoil anything, but gives me what kind of book it is. So, covers the first chapter, say. Anything significant that happens in the first chapter is fair game, because that's likely to be a small bit of the book. So anything that is spoiled about the end of the first chapter is unlikely to significantly impact my enjoyment of the book. But on the other hand, not keep everything hidden so I can judge what the book's going to be like. And my second point, uh, engagement. Having written a lot of blurbs myself, not because I've published a huge number of books, but because I've written many blurbs for each book, they're tricky particularly since Amazon and other retailers have introduced or moved higher up the blurb, their read more point, the point at which you need to actively click on a button or text or whatever to read the rest of the synopsis. So blurbs are hard to write and they're focusing more and more on catching the reader's attention straight away but potentially some of them are going too far. They're all pizzazz and hook. And they're giving the feeling that this book is an exciting whizzy romp because that's what draws the reader, makes them read the whole thing. Whereas the book itself is a slower burn, a more contemplative philosophical 
fantasy, sci-fi, adventure, or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if it's too zizzy, it gives me the feeling that the book is like that. And if the book isn't, then it's misrepresenting to an extent. But on the other hand, if the book is quite engaging, but the blurb isn't, then I'm less likely, and other readers are less likely, to go to the book. So I don't want the blurb to be less exciting than the book either. So I'd like the blurb to be as accurate to the style of story as possible, while being aware that a blurb is two or three short paragraphs. So in style is nothing like writing even a short story, let alone a novel. So it's a tricky thing. So my overall thought on synopses or blurbs is that potentially the best person to write them is an objective reviewer someone who isn't connected with the book. After several years of writing long form critiques of books, I was going, is the things that I notice when I'm looking at a book objectively, are the things that might affect a reader's enjoyment rather than the things that strongly impacted my specific enjoyment of that book at this point in my life are different lists. There are some things that I'll notice that don't bother me, such as some authors' habits of punctuating speech in a very odd way that other readers can't stand, or certain dialects that are really impenetrable to me but aren't impenetrable to people from the same country as the author. So the synopsis, ideally for me, would be written by someone who isn't the author, because then they're not thinking this is what the book is about when they start writing it. They're not potentially basing their this is what the book is about on the original idea that triggered the outline that turned into a rough draft that turned into another draft that was corrected through various stages of editing. So it isn't actually what the book is about now. It's about what the book might have been about 12 months ago when the author first had the idea. So, and the other problem with the author writing it is that the author does know what's in the book. So when it comes to that trimming, however many thousand paragraphs there are in a novel down to three, the author will understand immensely deeply what all of the things are. So when they say, Vorgrim goes to Gashlax. They know why that's a significant thing to talk about. But if you've never read the book or anything else set in the same world, it doesn't tell you anything other than someone goes somewhere. It potentially, well, you can work out that Vorgrim is a character, but Gashlax, is that a place? Or is it Vorgrim goes to see his brother Grashlax and his brother has been chopped out because the author's decided well we don't need to know the relationship in the synopsis but suddenly it becomes very nebulous which I don't know it's a, so my thoughts on synopses are that they're never going to be accurate and the people involved in writing them are unlikely to be the people who are in the position to make them as functional as they can be. But they're also 
one of the few ways there are of finding out what is a good book. There's, if I limited myself to only reading books where I'd seen a ten paragraph review by a skilled critic that made me think I might like the book, then I wouldn't really have very many books to read. Although I would potentially also have a lot less time to read because I'd be spending a lot of my time searching out book reviews and reading them and thinking carefully about whether if I liked seven paragraphs of the review, the eighth paragraph was a significant enough problem for me that I wouldn't enjoy the book after all. And even if I could get to that point where I was relying on professional reviewers, do I trust a book reviewer I've never met to get it right every time to care about the things I care about? Take The Great Gatsby. I can see the technical skill in The Great Gatsby, but I don't enjoy it as a book. Yet, if I look for reviews of The Great Gatsby, I'd be able to find hundreds and hundreds of long critiques setting out why The Great Gatsby is a great book. And I'm unlikely to find that many long detailed critiques that address the fact that fundamentally I just don't care about the characters because they're very accurate portrayals of characters that I probably wouldn't really care that much about in real life. So even the distillation that goes into a long form review would be too great to give me all the information I needed. So my closing thought would be that I think synopses are a necessary evil. Toodaloo!